Hey guys, we're about to see this announcement on the indictment on former President Trump. Let's listen about he interfered about attempt to overturn the election of Georgia. Let's listen. from a criminal conspiracy to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election in this state. The indictment includes 41 felony counts and is 97 pages long. Please remember that everyone charged in this bill of indictment is presumed innocent. Specifically, the indictment brings felony charges against Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Mark Randall Meadows, John Cheesebro, Jeffrey Clark, Jenna Lynn Ellis, Ray Stallings Smith the Third, Robert. David Cheely, Wow. Michael A. Roman, David James Schaefer, Sean Micah Tresher Steele, Stephen Cliffguard Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, Travion C. Cootie, Sydney Catherine Powell, Kathleen. Austin Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton, also known as Emily Misty Hayes. Wow. Every individual charged in the indictment is charged with one count of violating Georgia's Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act through participation in a criminal enterprise in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere to accomplish the illegal goal of allowing Donald J. Trump to seize the presidential term of office beginning on January 20th, 21. Specifically, the participants in association took various actions in Georgia and elsewhere to block the counting of the votes of the presidential electors who were certified as the winners of Georgia's 2020 general election. As you examine the indictment, you will see acts that are identified as overt acts and those that are identified This is why as former President Trump acts, is indicted. Sometimes called acts of racketeering activity. Overt acts are not necessarily crimes under Georgia law in isolation, but are alleged to be acts taken in furtherance of the conspiracy. Many occurred in Georgia and some occurred in other jurisdictions and are included because the grand jury believes they were part of the illegal effort to overturn the results of Georgia's 2020 presidential election. As you know, Georgia is the blue since my dad finally won. Since Georgia didn't get blue, since Bill Clinton won. That are alleged to have been committed in furtherance of the criminal enterprise. Acts of racketeering activity are also charged as separate counts in the indictment against those who are alleged to have committed them. All elections in our nation are administered by these states, which are given the responsibility of ensuring a fair process and an accurate counting of the votes. That includes elections for presidential electors, Congress, state officials, and local offices. The state's role in this process is essential to the functioning of our democracy. Georgia, like every state, has laws that allow those who believe that results of an election are wrong whether because of intentional wrongdoing or unintentional error to challenge those results in our state courts. This is a lot of evidence. I the ever 
faith that rather than by, abide by Georgia's legal process for election challenges, the defendants engaged in a criminal racketeering enterprise to overturn Georgia's presidential election result. Subsequent to the indictment, as is the normal process in Georgia law, the, the grand jury issued arrest warrants for those who are charged. I am giving the defendants the opportunity to voluntarily surrender no later than noon on Friday, the 25th day of August, 2023. I remind everyone here that an indictment is only a series of allegations based on a grand jury's determination of probable cause to support the charges. It is now the duty of my office to prove these charges in the indictment beyond a reasonable doubt at trial. I would like to take a moment to thank, thank the Superior Court Clerk, Shay Alexander, and her staff for staying late and making sure that this indictment was processed. I would also like to thank the men and women of Sheriff Labatt's office for keeping the courthouse open, but most importantly, for keeping us safe over the weeks and months that have led up to this indictment and for what I know they will continue to do to keep us safe. We also want to thank the Atlanta Police Department and other law enforcement partners who have worked with the sheriff to keep us safe. I will now take a very limited number of questions prior uh, to going to sleep. Can you clarify in Georgia uh, the mandatory minimum when it comes to RICO charges, whether it's servable by probation or how that might play out? The, the RICO charges has time that you have to serve, so it is not a probated sentence. What's the time? What is the timetable for the trial? As you know, in this jurisdiction, trials are set by the judges. Um, and so it will be the judge that sets the date of the trial. This office will be su submitting a proposed scheduling order within this week. However, that will totally be at the discretion of the judge. Huge indictment we're having. Don't have any desire to be first or last. I want to try him and be respectful for our sovereign states. Um, we do want to move this case along, and so we will be asking for a proposed order that occurs a trial date within the next six months. Attorney, uh, there was an earlier today who was a fictitious document according to the Fulton County Clerk's Office that was circulated online to charges against former President Donald Trump. Those that fictitious document. Uh, matched exactly the charges that we now see in this indictment. Can you tell us more about that document, Lee? Uh, because now you have the former president's lawyers who are saying this is emblematic of a serious problem with your office. No, I can't tell you anything about um, what you refer to. What I can tell you is that we had a grand jury here in Fulton County. They deliberated till almost 8 o'clock, if not right after 8 o'clock. An indictment was returned. It was true billed, and you now have an indictment. Um, I am not an expert on clerks' duties um, or even administrative duties. I wouldn't know how to work that system, and so I'm not going to speculate. Next question. Have you had a special counsel about overlap between these cases? If you attend the trial, the defense counsel will be do I intend to try the 19 defendants in this indictment together? Yes. And have you had any contact with the special counsel about the overlap between the investigation? I'm not going to discuss our investigation at this time. I'm going to take the arguments made by former President Trump that this is a political I make decisions in this office based on the facts and the law. Um, the law is completely nonpartisan. That's how decisions are made in every case. To date, this office has indicted, since I've been sitting as a district attorney, over 12,000 cases. This is the 11th RICO indictment. We follow the same process. We look at the facts, we look at the law, and we bring charges. This is quite of a huge indictment we're having. Wow. Okay, so you were just listening and today Bonnie Willis giving a press conference. Wow. And of note, she read all of the names of the 19 people. Wow, everyone. Donald 
that's a lot of evidence and a, a lot of evidence former President Trump attempted to try to overturn the 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 election of 2020 and in a part of the American state of Georgia since since Georgia was been flipped to blue since Bill Clinton won and wow we'll have to see what happens next and and Trump is in even more in trouble a lot of evidence that it's been found so as well including to Rudy Giuliani he is also well in trouble after since he made a speech during the Save America rally March of of January 6 after he said about as well to let's have trial by combat all right, if you guys like this video, please make sure you subscribe, drop a like, and comment below. And make sure you also follow me on X. Turn on notifications so you never miss the video. And happy birthday to me, everyone. See you soon, everyone.